in the previous movie, we did a bouncing ball in a rough animation style. And one of the great things about working digitally is that we could actually use this rough animation style and apply color to a layer underneath it. But maybe you want to clean it up. You might want that classic cleaner uh, animation look. So let me show you how we will do it. There's a right way and a wrong way. So uh, I'm going to make a new layer for cleanup and I'll just make it a little plus sign here. Double click on that and call it cleanup. I want the layer beneath to be to look different from the layer on top. Now a couple of ways we can do it. We can go to the, the original rough layer and we can take the opacity down. And now when we work on the cleanup layer, we can have uh, differentiation in terms of tone, but we can also change the color. And let's right click on ball arcs and go layer style, color overlay, choose normal. 100% and I'll pick sort of a, a light blue. Okay, okay. I think it didn't take, go back, do that again. Yeah, weird. So again, color, blue, blue. Okay, and now you see like a little effects icon appear here. And that, if I take the opacity back up now too, you can see that now the ball is actually uh, blue. You can see it in the first frame. And notice when I play a little sort of glitchiness here, it disappears. So the solution to this, go to the first frame and FX off and FX on. And now when we play, it plays with the blue overlay color through, through the entire thing. So we can switch that on and off as we like. So we have these different ways that we can uh, modify the rough layer. So I'm gonna go with blue and I'm gonna take the opacity down a little bit. And I'm feeling like the blue is like a little too uh, subtle. So let me right click again, layer style color overlay and let's really make that blue lighter and I think that'll be a lot easier to work with so let's make sure that we are uh, on the cleanup layer I'm gonna color code this again right click maybe make it orange and uh, let's see we can probably get rid of some of the older layers from previous movies here oh the bin that would help that reference layer is just this ground plane we're gonna keep that the thumbnails, I'm gonna maybe keep the thumbnails for now. So, okay, so that gets us the cleanup layer, the ball arcs. If I don't want to see this thumb layer now, I think we can probably hide it. This little pin here will hide that. So uh, then if I click on the, the top layer, it should be gone. So back on cleanup now, click on the cleanup panel and the, in the layers panel so that we're working on that the right layer. So, okay. We, procrastinating enough. Let's zoom in. Now, the way I zoom in, uh, shift and space and control shift will enable you to scrubby zoom and to um, rotate the canvas. I have mapped those in keyboard shortcuts to the OR key and the Z key, uh, and that enables me a much more fluid um, process. I don't know why the credit developers tried to torture my hand with uh, a two-fingered process for something as fundamental as rotating the animation desk and zooming in that should have been a one key shortcut so i i have a previous movie explaining how to do that you may be able to handle the, the two the two fingered um shortcut i hate it so it might be worth your time to fix that yourself so i'm going to try a different uh brush here and we can change the opacity of this brush as well so this would be, uh, it looks very rough right now. Like when you look at this, it seems kind of jaggy. Let's zoom out and see what that might look like if I switch off. Like when we actually export this, that's not too bad. So that's certainly one look that you might be comfortable with. Um, let me put the other layer back on here. The other uh, brush we might try, let's see a different cleanup style, maybe that one. Uh, we might try like a, a much darker one. And again, you have an entire library of of these um, whoops, normal, of these brushes in your brush panel. So don't be afraid to spend some time messing around with that. Let me see if I can get a better one. So we have these, like that's my painting brush. We could that this would be great for like a, a artistic style, like an aha type music video take on me. Uh, let's see here if I can find the one I'm looking for. <laughs> I've only got eight brushes and I still can't find the one I want. I think that might be it. Go opacity full. That might be the one to go with. This one here. 
Oh, that one. I'm going to go with that one on the end. Because it's the darkest, it's the most clean up -y of all the brushes. So let's try that. But it's very blobby. Now, again, this kind of issue might be... Uh, like, depending on your drawing tablet and your pressure sensitivity, you might have a totally different uh, experience with this. And you can also customize, like, brush pressure settings and the brush panel here, which I really don't want to get into too much. It's it's kind of a rabbit hole right now. Let me just make this brush size smaller. I'm, I'm using the bracket keys to make it smaller. I think I can, yeah, take it down. And you can also change the size here. Too small, it's barely registering. Let's make it about... One, one, one would probably be fine. So whenever you determine, I'm gonna go up a couple more clicks here, 126, make that a bit more. Okay, let's try that. So 165. So you want to make sure if you're gonna be doing a project that you you uh, keep this kind of consistent, that your brush uh, pencil size doesn't start like going all over the place. Now, there are people who can do this kind of clean up in one amazing turn. I am not one of those amazing people. So I'm going to do a hack cleanup because it's not my favorite of jobs. I, I prefer my animation to have a rougher feel to it. So I would, on my stuff, never clean it up quite to this level of purity. And I probably am not going to like this when I zoom out. So if it's five on the keyboard, it recenters it. And now we zoom out. It's actually not as bad as I thought. So we can go back in, hit the E key, and now with the, the same brush size, 165 or thereabouts, we can go back in and we can delete out any rough spots. So if you have a shaky hand, if this isn't your thing, no worries. Um, so by going uh, hitting E, I can toggle between the eraser and the brush using the very same tool, which is really great because I can erase it. Let me go too far. Oops, and now I hit E and I'm back to a brush. So you can use this addition extraction process as well to get some interesting effects. I can whoop, I can hit rotate on the keyboard and again, E again, and a bit of erasing, E again, and a bit of drawing. So that's the basic process. And let's see if I can find another trouble spot here. Just fatten that line a bit and hit E, and then I can erase a little bit. I find this sort of stuff way, this kind of precision work much easier on paper uh, there's something about drawing on glass that of the tablet that um, really works against me, but uh, for certain things, this is one of them. So uh, undo that. So number five on the keyboard kind of resets. D. So I think that little pixel blob there is looking weird too. Let me very, very carefully bite into that. And there's a little... Maybe you can see it, like there's a little bump there. So same thing, very carefully. Take that out. I'm hitting E again to fill the line in on the inside. Ugh, that'll do for now. So um, I could be hacking at that all day on this ridiculous kind of blobby pixel. And the other issue that I have is with Krita itself. The Krita brush tools feel a little different to me from Photoshop. So I'm having a slightly harder time getting used to how the, the brushes behave. Um, I'm no doubt I will get better as time goes on but just so you know like if you do move from a different program be used to be prepared for a little bit of brush adaptation anyway we have our rough layer beneath in blue and we have the cleanup layer on top so the right way to clean up if you want to maintain control and this applies to simple scenes like this bouncing ball but also to character animation especially you replicate the same flow or sequence production that you did when you animated the rough. Now, when we did the rough animation, if you watched the previous movie, we did the keys first here in gray. So we repeat that process again. So on the cleanup layer, be sure we have the cleanup layer active. Uh, I'm gonna click on the uh, little button here for add a blank frame. And now we have our timeline down. I can go forward to the next key. And I think all I have to do is select this tool here, move a layer and just drag. And then we have here to there, and we'll just keep keep doing that. I don't know why it's given me this little line here. I wonder, did I have like a little dot? Is there some other, I think there's something up here. So I'm going to actually undo both of those steps. There must be like a stray pixel or something. So we undo, delete that. Just hit the delete key to delete a drawing, that's fine. 
And uh, let's see here, control T. Yeah, there's something <laughs> that's very strange. So hopefully this isn't going to be a problem. Let me hit, get the lasso tool here. Select that area, control X, control D, control T. Yeah, so that that's um, annoying. So we do obviously we don't want to have some stray pixel. Maybe I accidentally touched something off the top of the screen. Crit is very sensitive with that kind of stuff. So I still have these annoying slugs here. So let me get rid of them. So here we go, remove keyframe. And we go remove keyframe. Because th that was just an empty keyframe, which we don't need. So we go here, repeat that process again. And I will leave in that silly mistake so you can see. Because it'll, it'll almost certainly happen to you at some point. And that's how I dealt with it. So I'm just going to go forward and just create new drawings where needed. I could, if I wanted to, redraw these from scratch. But in this case, having something as simple as a ball, we can basically treat it like a cut and paste or a, you know, a cheat, basically. So I'm not going to worry about the uh, color layer colors at the moment because I think we just have... Um, we can use the bottom layer as a reference for now. So I'm going to... Can use the the rough layer as a, a guide to the squash and stretch. Again, as close as I can match it. Doesn't have to be a hundred percent, but ninety nine point nine percent will be fine. Uh, I think here too. Well, that's going to be spherical. This is our next squash and stretch will be here. That one was, I think, on the roughs losing a bit of volume. So let me give it a bit of volume back. And okay, now I, I'm starting to get really annoyed by not having the right uh, colors. So I'm going to make these gray. Right click and make the keys gray. And the breakdown's red. And there was my cat. Okay, so next thing will be just to add the, uh, the various in betweens. Let's just do that. And I think uh, these colors need to be taken away. So I'm using gray for keyframes, red for breakdowns, and just the, the default blue for everything else. This one needs a little uh, stretch on it. Using Control T is my shortcut that I've made for this. There we go. And I'm going to use uh, Alt or Option and drag to copy the original ball back to here. And again, this should be no color. And then. So this would be great for a character with like a very fiddly costume element. A friend of mine did some artwork, if memory, memory is correct, on the 2008 Judge Dredd many years ago. And he said they were so picky about Dredd's, Dredd's badge. It's like almost like a trademark thing. So imagine drawing that over and over again if you were animating Judge Dredd. So um, this is the kind of technique that you would use for a component of a complex character. Uh, like a wristwatch with, with writing on it or something. You don't want to draw over and over again. This is absolutely the thing to do. So let's just continue here. And again, uh, this will be no color. And Alt, Option, and Drag to copy that back into here. And make sure that's no color. And again, no color. And here. Okay, so now I'm going to click off the rough layer and play the cleanup. Not too bad. And let's put onion skin on. Now, in the previous movie, often when you have onion skin, uh, it um, and you can control how much onion skin you see here too. Normally, it'll just allow you to see like, you know, two or three on each side. We can, by clicking on the onion skin marker here, if you don't see it, you'll see the um, control of the onion skin display. So if I just have the two frames and I just hit stop, it doesn't do you much good to, you know, preview the whole thing. So let's just do this and that, that'll show us enough. So now when we zoom in, again we can check to make sure we haven't gone too far off. I think this uh, ball here, this uh, stretch ball is losing a bit of volume and again this is why it's great to have the color codes. I know it's going to be this one here because it was a breakdown drawing. So if these were all blue and I hadn't gone to that uh, extreme of coloring them all, it would have taken me you know a bit of time to find it. So. Let's go back in here and do a bit of tweaking on that and just give it a bit of volume. And there's nothing stopping me from actually going back in and with the eraser tool and uh, getting the brush and uh, 
you know, redrawing it if I want to like make an actual change to it, but I'm not going to do it for the purposes of this one. Uh, I think the stretch might have enough volume. I think that's okay. So, and I think overall it's not too bad. Like if I stop here too, we can, we can see that we're more or less arcing all right. Okay, onion skin off, bounce. And there's another lovely kind of touch here in this program. I really like Krita, I have to say, like speed, if I think it's going too fast and I just need to be able to like shuttle it through at a slower frame rate. This is a great way to pick up possible mistakes or if you have like a very complex scene, you don't have to, to futz with the frame rate. You can just say play at one tenth speed and when you're happy with what you see, we can go back to 100. Type it in even, and there we go. And in a previous movie, I actually tested the, the um, frame rate. And on my computer, at least, which is a fairly decent computer, but not the newest, uh, it played okay. It, it was like very, very close to playing in real time. So well done, Krita Devs. You are doing a better job than Adobe Photoshop. So I think that is probably where I would leave the cleanup part of the process. I could also draw in the frame numbers on the cleanup drawings. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to just keep the original rough ball layer beneath. And then I have the rough layer, I have the cleanup layer, uh, because you might want to export the cleanup layer and you don't want a bunch of numbers flickering away in the background. So you can also put them in and erase them later on if you want. That's fine too. But I think for our purposes here, we're okay. Um, switch off the rough and play through one more time. Brill, like it. So that's it, that's the cleanup done. We have our rough layer done, we have our cleanup layer done. What's next? What's next will be color, that's in the next movie. So I hope I see you then.